Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright, it's a consultant audiologist and director of Clearwax. Thank you for joining me in this very interesting case uh, where I actually used the wax scope and the eye clear scope in tandem. And you may have seen there, this patient uh, presented with uh, a very lateral um, oral polyp. Now it may just be um, a fibro epithelial uh, polyp. Uh, it could possibly be a keloid, but it, it looks a bit too rough. It's not moist and damp, so it's not discharging. But with any uh, form of skin tags like that or oral polyps, they do need to be investigated further just to ensure they're not malignant in any way. So uh, we have referred this patient onwards. Um, they do report that being quite itchy, that area. And it's, I would say it's just on the underside of the tragus cartilage. So it's right at the entrance. So a um, bit of a backstory. This patient um, does suffer from chronic wax impaction. They travelled a distance to visit myself actually today, uh, yesterday. And their previous experience they had elsewhere was extremely uncomfortable to the point where the patient had to ask the specialist to, to stop the procedure. So we had to bear that in mind. Um, I've turned down the brightness slightly because of that um, skin tag. I didn't want it to, or that oral polyp um, at the entrance. When you enter, you can get a lot of reflections. I just turned it down a bit, but it's just enough to still obviously still be able to clearly see. Um, the wax that I'm moving and this entire ear canal is blocked from the entrance all the way to the eardrum they have got a very narrow bendy ear canal um, I decided to use the 4.25 um, millimeter specular but um, could have quite easily used a smaller one as well but I was able to dilate the ear canal with this it wasn't too big um, so it just gave me a bit more of a better visual and you can see that last plug was extremely dark now here you'll get a perspective of how narrow and bendy the patient's ear canal is. We're just going to stretch the ear now. I'm just brightening it slightly just to get a better view of the eardrum. But the anterior canal wall, you can see it on screen at nine o'clock. That's a, a protrusion of the bony part of the ear canal on the anterior canal wall, and it makes the ear canal very, very bendy. Um, we can still see the whole eardrum. Now, this is the patient's right ear. So I'm just seeing if I can adjust the focus, uh, the, sorry, the brightness a little bit more here. And I'm just adjusting the focus. There's no polyp here on this side. Now, this here was a, uh, quite a tricky um, case. Um, I'll say for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, the patient's ear canal, once more, was very bendy and twisty. Um, but this is their worst ear, and they've been using a lot of olive oil drops prior to attending. Um, and they already have soft wax. There's a lot of keratin, a lot of dead skin involved here, which gave it a very mushy consistency. So uh, on this side, I removed the majority of the wax, but there was some left in the anterior recess. And that's where, uh, again, the endoscope, you, you can't compete with an endoscope in terms of removing wax from an anterior recess. Um, I was watching a, a video yesterday of a, a prominent ENT surgeon who performs really complex middle ear surgery and um, there was an interesting one that um, it came up yesterday on my feed and they, they specialize in um, a stapedectomy so if you have a condition called otosclerosis and that's when the stirrup bone the last bone the stapes bone becomes fused with the oval window which is the gateway to the organ of hearing so the stapes bone connects with the organ of hearing via this oval window and you get sometimes a spongy bony growth developing there which fixates the stapes bone so the surgeon has to remove that um, um, fixed stapes bone and replace it with a titanium prosthesis and they had a case where it's a very narrow ear canal and they had to they spent about 20 minutes just chiseling the external part of the ear canal so they use a microscope uh, it's a very high quality microscope and you can compare the wax scope similarly in terms of optics to a microscope so most people in the UK still don't use an endoscope. Um, and that's for, for many different reasons, but um, probably one of the biggest reasons is it is uh, quite a difficult skill to acquire um, because unlike with the wax scope or microscope or head loops, there's no speculae involved. You're having to stretch and dilate the ear canal using the side of the endoscope. So there's a lot of bilateral integration. You're using... Um, and coordination between both hands. So a lot of people really struggle to get the grip and keep the hand stabilised. So yeah, um, the ENT surgeon, to get access into the middle ear, they had to chisel away a tremendous amount of bone. And that's because the bone is not flexible. If you've got a bendy, twisty ear canal, 
it's a bit difficult because what do you do uh, with the cartilage portion where we are now the outer third with, with when i'm in terms of the speculus the specular only should fit up to the junction between the bone and cartilage so about one third into the ear canal if it goes any further into the ear it's going to make contact with the bony part of the ear canal and it can sometimes be a bit uncomfortable for the patient now if a patient's asleep um and you're doing surgery of course you can push it in a lot further because they're not going to feel it but when a patient is awake like in this case um, the specular shouldn't really protrude beyond the uh, the cartilage portion of the ear canal. It should just reside on the, the uh, cartilage portion. It shouldn't really make contact with the bony part. So I've just zoomed in here. This is this is right on the eardrum now. This is the inferior recess. There's a little trench this patient's got, and here's the anterior recess. So I've got a good view actually. But, uh, that little um, kind of almost shadowing effect. That's just a few hairs at the entrance. So. Um, I do manage to get a bit more out with the waxscape, but in the end, I just had to resort, resort to the endoscope. So when you use a specular, you can stretch and straighten the cartilage portion of the ear canal because that's malleable, it's flexible. You can't do that with the bony part. So hence why, for me, the endoscope still is um, number one. Um, but uh, in cases like this, uh, with the wax, you can see we removed the majority of the, um, the wax. The patient was able to hear very well at this stage even, but I wanted to get this out. I have a feeling this has been there for a long, long time because, as I mentioned earlier, they, they previously underwent a procedure and had to abandon it because it was very painful for them. So I've zoomed in here. Got to just be careful of that anterior canal wall to the right. So that bone to the right is what the surgeon in the video that I watched the other day chiseled away. So they lifted the skin. Uh, so you elevate the skin um, to expose the bone. And they used a, a combination of a diamond um, um, ended drill bit um, and also a, a bone correct where you literally chisel the bone away with a, a, a stainless steel correct. Um, and that just str straightened that portion of the ear canal. So here we are with the endoscope, the eye clearscape, and you can see this is the beauty of the endoscope. It's just a wide field of view. Um, we can position the endoscope on the back part of the ear canal to the left and then rotate it towards the interior recess. And you can see we've got a full visual here. So I've just dosed this with a lot of olive oil because it's really stuck, it's sticky. Now, I probably would have managed to get it out with the waxscope, but... Of course, I just felt um, at this stage it would be better just to revert to the eye clear scope just to get uh, better optics. Um, lifting this, so it's still a bit tricky. You can lift it up and over. So I've gone back more to the anterior recess. So we got it. You can see I've, I've curled the end of the fine end as well, just to make sure we avoid the contact with the bone. We don't want to be touching that bone because it'd be very uncomfortable for the patient. And I suspect probably that's what's happened to the patient in the past. Um, the specialists that they saw were making contact with the side walls. And just freed it out from there. So again, it was quite a struggle, but we managed. So those are those hairs at the entrance. Can smear the lens a bit. There's also a few, a few matted hairs here, which can sometimes suggest um, the wax has been pushed in, uh, but also uh, they can become loose and kind of fly into the ear sometimes. So again, you can see how bendy that ear is, just straightening it up. You can see the whole eardrum now. And that's the debris from both sides. So um, I really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And if you are interested in the wax scope, please do uh, email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you. Bye.